general characteristics and classification of phylum Echinodermata. You know we have already discussed about the general characteristics, particularly water vascular system in details and Echinoderm larvae in details in our previous lecture. Now we will discuss about the classification of phylum Echinodermata. Scheme of classification according to Pechnik 2002. Phylum Echinodermata has been divided into three subphylum subphylum Crinozoa, subphylum Asterozoa, and subphylum Echinozoa. Subphylum Crinozoa has one class, class Crinoidea. Subphylum Asterozoa has been divided into two classes, class Steleroidea, S T E L L E R O I D E A, Steleroidea, and class Concentricycloidea, Concentricycloidea. Subphylum Echinozoa has been divided into two classes, class Echinoidea and class Holothuroidea. Now we will discuss about the distinctive features of various subphylum and classes. Subphylum Crinozoa, body attached by arboreal structure or by stalk. The stalk is flexible, being composed of a series of calcareous discs stacked one on top of the other and held together by connective tissue. Presence of a cup-like structure, cup, named as calyx, C-A-L-Y-X. The structure containing the complete digestive system and is covered by a lid forming membrane, the tegment uh, that bears the mouth. Tube feet when present are small, tubular and without suckers. From 5 to more than 200 arms extend outward from the calyx and all bear tube feet. Two rows of ambulacral or tubular pinules, tubular pinules extend outward from each arm. Subphylum Crinozoa has one class, class Crinoidea. Characters a stalk usually present, arms movable and branch, both mouth and anus at the oral surface, mouth centrally placed. Example, Antedon, Feather Star, A-N-T-E-D-O-N, Antedon, Feather Star. Another one, Metacrinus, M-E-T-A-C-R-I-N-U-S, Metacrinus, Sea Lily, commonly known as Sea Lily, Metacrinus, commonly known as Sea Lily. Next, subphylum Asterozoa, body star-shaped or pentagonal, radially symmetrical, arms usually five or maybe multiple of five, aboral surface convex, oral surface flat, mouth on the oral surface and anus on the aboral surface. Asterozoa, subphylum Asterozoa has two classes. First, class Steleroidea. Class Steleroidea. Arms generally five or a multiple of five extend from a central disc. These animals 
differ from the crinoids in lacking stalk in lacking stalk and in having the arms arranged star like around the flattened body next subclass ophuroidea class tilaroidea has been divided into subclasses two subclasses we have discussed the subclass here subclass ophuroidea well developed ossicles in the arms form a linear series of articulating vertebrae the term vertebrae you do not confuse with the term vertebrae with the term of vertebrates the oral surface bears five pair of invaginations which may serve for gas exchange and as brood chamber body is star shaped or pentamerous the subclass is named in recognition of the snake like movements made by arms during locomotion they generally possess five long arms which sharply set off from the central disc example amphura a m p h i u r a amphura next subclass asteroidea body is pentagonal radially symmetrical radially symmetrical arms usually five and not sharply set off from central disc the gonads and portions of the digestive tract extend into each arm locomotion is slow and is accomplished by the highly coordinated activities of all the tube that radiate out along the oral surface of each arm tube feet present in ambulacral groups we have already discussed about the structure ambulacral groups on the oral surface madreporite on the abdominal surface example asterias a s t e r i a s asterias popularly known as sea star earlier it has been designated as starfish starfish now it is known as sea star another one is astropectin a s t r o p e c t e n astropectin so class subphylum asterozoa subphylum asterozoa has been divided into two classes class tilaroidea and class concentricycloidea class tilaroidea again subdivided into two subclass subclass ophuroidea example amphura and subclass asteroidea example asterias now we discuss about the class concentricycloidea the class concentricycloidea is popularly known as c daisies c daisies d a i s i e s the water vascular system includes what appear to be two concentric water vascular rings two concentric water vascular rings the tube feet are arranged in a circular pattern along the animal's periphery a calcareous endoskeleton of distinct ossicles present the body is supported by a series of overlapping skeletal plates arranged in concentric rings they are very small less than 1 cm in diameter and found from the deep sea with a disc shaped body without any radiating arms example xyloplax xyloplax species x y l o 
P-L-A-X, Xyloplax, popular name, common name, C. daisies. Next, subphylum Echinozoa, Echinozoa, globoid or discoid structure without arms or branchioles, mostly arm attached, radially symmetrical, radially symmetrical. Subphylum Echinozoa has been divided into two classes, class Echinoidea and class Holothuroidea, class Echinoidea, body globular, oval or heart shaped, ambulacra and interambulacra alternate, ossicles are joined to form a rigid taste. Adults generally possess a complex system of ossicles and muscles that can be partially protruded from the mouth for grazing and chewing known as Aristotle lantern. We discuss in detail about this very interesting structure later in our discussion about Aristotle lantern. This class poses a large number of long, rigid calcium carbonate spines, hence the Greek word echinus means literally a hedgehog, hedgehog is given. The spines serve for protection and in some species in locomotion. Example, echinus species. E C H I N U S Echinus E C H I N U S Echinus species. Next, U C D A R I S E U C I D A R I S U C D A R I S species. Its common name is very interesting. Pencil archin. Pencil P E N C I L. Pencil archin. U R C H I N. Next one, Clipester species, Clipester species, C L Y P E A S T E R, Clipester species. Its common name also very interesting, C biscuit, C biscuit. Next, class Holothuroidea, class Holothuroidea. It is popularly known as C cucumber, C cucumber. The body is cylindrical, that is worm shaped, being greatly elongated along the oral aboral axis. The calcareous ossicles are reduced in size and embedded individually in the body wall. Ambulacra and Tiedman's body absent, highly branched muscular respiratory structure termed as respiratory trees generally one pair extend from the cloaca into the silomic cavity example cucumaria sp cucumaria c u c u m a r i a cucumaria species next holothuria species holothuria H O L O T H U R I A, Holothuria species. According to Parker and Haswell, which edited by Marshall and Williams in the year 1974, they classified phylum Echinodermata into four subphylum subphylum Echinozoa. Subphylum Homalozoa, which is now extinct, Homalozoa now become extinct, Subphylum Crinozoa and Subphylum Asterozoa. Subphylum Echinozoa has been classified into two classes, class Echinoidea and class Holothuroidea. It is same as the classification proposed by Pechny. Subphylum Crinozoa has one class, class Crinoidea. It is also same as proposed by Pechny, but 
subphylum Asterozoa has been divided into a single class, class Stileroidea, class Stileroidea. This class is very interesting as per their classification. So, we will discuss only about this class, class Stileroidea. Star-shaped body with open ambulacral globes. This class has been divided into three subclasses. Subclass Somasteroidea, Somasteroidea, S O M A S T E R O I D E A. Next subclass Asteroidea, A S T E R O I D E A, Asteroidea, and then subclass Ophiuroidea, O P H I. U R O I D E A of Uroidea. First subclass Somasteroidea. Body with pinnate shaped, pinnate shaped skeleton, arms like petals constricted at the base, intestine closed, no anus present, flat disc like body having a central spherical plate. Example, Ampulaster, A-M-P-U-L-L-A-S-T-E-R, Ampulaster. Next, subclass, Asteroidea, body truly star-shaped with five symmetrical arms, distinct oral and aboral end, oral end bears the ambulacral group with tube fate, Pupuli help in respiration, larva bipinaria or doliolaria. We have discussed it earlier. Example, Asterius. Another one is Astropectin. Next, subclass of Uroidea. Body with a small central disc. From this disc, five arms radiate out like whips. And arms always move like a snake, hence the name Anas pedicillari and tube feet with sucker absent. Arms and brittle, arms are brittle and can regenerate quickly, so they are called brittle stir. Larva mainly pluteus. Example Ophura, O P H I U A R A, R A, Ophura. O P H I U R A Ophiura Ophiotrix. Another one is Ophiotrix. O P H I O T H R Y X Ophiotrix. Now we will discuss about the origin and evolution of phylum Echinodermata. The relationship of phylum Echinodermata with other invertebrate phyla has not yet been determined. The answer of some important questions like who are the ancestors of Echinoderm is the origin of Echinoderm is monophyletic or polyphyletic. What is about their adaptive radiation in aquatic environment etc. are yet to be solved. Two theories about the ancestral Pre-echinoderm are Dipleurula concept proposed by Bather in the year 1900 and Pentactula concept proposed by Simon and Bury in the year 1895. According to Dipleurula concept, Echinoderm has evolved from a group of pre-echinoderm ancestor whose larva was a dipleurula. But according to Pentactula concept, echinoderm arose from pre-echinoderm ancestor having Pentactula larva. Both the theory emphasized that pre-echinoderm ancestors have either dipleurula or Pentactula both of which were bilaterally symmetrical. The important features is bilaterally symmetrical. Radial symmetry of echinoderm is a secondary adaptive character. 
According to R.C. Moore in the year 1967 on paleontology showed that origin of echinoderm is polyphyletic. Homolozoa and crinoidea evolved separately from pre-echinoderm ancestor. Asteroidea and holothuroidea evolved from the common ancestor and after their evolution asteroidea gave rise to ophuroidea and holothuroidea to echinoidea. Some common examples of different classes of echinodermata. Class Asteroidea, commonly known as sea stars. Class Ophuroidea, commonly known as brittle stars. Class Echinoidea, commonly known as sea archins. Class Holothuroidea, commonly known as sea cucumbers. Class Crinoidea, commonly known as sea feathers. This is some photograph of asteroidea. Look at the shape, size and colorations. This is ophuroidea. Photograph of some ophuroids. Echinoidea. Some echinoids. Holothuroidea. Holothuroidea. Crinoidea. Crinoidea. Photograph of crinoidea. Now we will discuss some important question. Why ophuroids are so named? Why ophuroids? Why ophuroids are so named? The subclass ophuroidea is named in recognition of the snake-like movements by these arms during locomotion. Snake-like movements made by these arms during locomotion. Why ophuroids known as brittle star? Why ophuroids known as brittle B R I double T L E brittle star? The common name for a typical ophuroid is brittle star, reflecting the tendency of the arms to detach from the central disc when provoked, reflecting the tendency of the arms to detach from the central disc when provoked. Name the class of echinodermata in which body is worm shaped or elongated along the oral aboral axis. Along the oral aboral axis. Name the class of echinodermata in which body is worm shaped or elongated along the oral aboral axis. Answer is holothuroidea. Holothuroidea. Name one example where respiratory trees are found. Name one example where respiratory trees are found. Holothuria. Or another one is cucumaria. Next important question is what is respiratory tree. What is respiratory tree? Holothurians are the only echinoderms. Holothurians are the only echinoderms to possess truly specialized internal respiratory structures called respiratory trees. In Holothurians, Silomes hold a pair of highly branched muscular structures. Pair of highly branched muscular structure connected to cloaca, connected to cloaca, which pumped mus water into the trees. Water is expelled through the cloaca by the contraction of the respiratory tree tribules themselves. Next, another important question. What is Aristotle lantern? What is Aristotle lanterns? You can see the photograph of diagram of Aristotle lantern. 
in echinoidea adults generally possess a complex system of ossicles and muscles that can be partially protruded from the mouth for grazing and chewing known as or termed as aristotle's lantern it surrounds the esophagus it surrounds the esophagus and the teeth of aristotle lantern moved in various direction to scrap food especially algae from solid substrates detritus feeding deep sea urchins use the detritus feeder deep sea urchin use this lantern to scoop mud now references after this discussion we have to go through the following books technique biology of invertebrates 2002 rupert fox and barnes invertebrate zoology 2004 meglis paul and frederick invertebrate zoology 1991 thank you